Well, I'm still wearing the white shirt, and Kevin Bartle still get the cowboy hat still on. Still wearing the hat. Want to order a Diet Coke? I look like a waiter. Come on, man. I don't know about that. They're still, yeah, that's that's a little harsh now. Now we're hitting below the belt over there. Well, anyways, Ryan Holt, Kevin Bartle, joined by Condors forward Chase Shaver here in our, our players segment. Chase didn't bring by his son. Jet's sleeping here today. He's he's mixing in a nap. How many naps does he take a day? Well, when Dad has a day off, he has a day off, so he uh, he sleeps a lot. So you, you know, don't don't wake the baby, man. Don't wake the baby. Don't, don't wake poke the, the baby. bear. <laughs> don't poke the bear. Hey, has it been nice? I know he was up uh, up north in Canada early on in the season, but has it been nice here over the last couple of months to to have him, your girlfriend, down as well uh, here in Bakersfield? Yeah, absolutely. It's always nice when you got uh, your family down here with you. Uh, and you go home and you, after practice, you see Jet. As soon as you pop my head in the door, he's got this big old smile on his face. And it's, <laughs> it's play time right away. So, you know, I, I don't get any more nap time. Yeah. I get home and I have to play and <laughs> early bedtimes for me. So my schedule's changed quite a bit since they've been down here. Everything changes, man. Uh-huh. Everything. And it must be nice, too. I mean, you know, as part of a team, uh, when, when you have a young kid like that, I mean, he's got – 20 to 22 uncles now hanging out uh, every day. And I saw him hanging out by the pool with Tyler Buns uh, a couple days ago as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, (laughs) the boys are awesome with them. They, you know, whenever me and Megan want some time, you know, to go for dinner or go to a movie or do something, you know, all the guys are game for – you know, I'll take Jet. I'll take Jet. You know, I'll Who look knew after this about him our and, squad. You know, they're they're all they're all great with them. Like they're all. I mean, I'm not sure I'd let them. You know, but it's <laughs> great that they're offered. No, it, they're they're great with them. Like I trust <laughs> I trust all of them with them. So uh, there's no problems there. It's pretty, it's pretty cool to have. That's great. Uh, last night, obviously, four goals. We can uh, we can tee up the highlights. We only have three out of the goals. Uh, blame Las Vegas. They didn't have the film for the the third goal uh, late in the second period. When was but, the last four goal game? I mean, has this ever happened? (laughs) Probably the last time it happened was in Bantam. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this is the good one coming up. uh, Take me through this one because this was the, uh, I thought the back-breaking goal. It turns out just to be a a goal in the hockey game. But what goes through your mind uh, when you pick up the puck behind the net? And, you know, how much thought process is there is, you know, hey, I'm going to do this move and and here's how I'm going to execute it? Uh, I don't know. I just kind (laughs) of. You know, before the game, it was just all in, like, preparation, you know. It's just, uh, I just said to myself, if you don't take any risks, there's going to be no rewards. So, you know. You and, can't prepare to and, toss and, the puck around that, the in that, man, In that though, case and, right there, I was like, I'm just going to do a move. If the puck gets poked off my stick, I'll back check. But, you know, I ended up pulling it off, and uh, it felt good to put that one in the back of the net. That was a great shift, though. Uh, we talked about it in the last segment. Holty asked, I mean, it's got to be a lot of fun as a forward when you know that you're just controlling the play down there and you're just wearing those guys oh, out. Oh, yeah, big time. When you got those two big bodies, McNeil and Naxted, down there with me, they, they, can, they have unbelievable hands, and the way they're able to hold off guys and, you know, make plays and roll off. And right. we were able to wear some wear a lot of the defensemen down and even the forwards. So that played that played a lot of help in uh, those goals, you know, just beating them down and then taking advantage of them when they're tired. Get a look at the the picture there. Chase Shaber winning a faceoff. Now with, with Broda up and with Miller up, uh, you kind of been thrust back into the centerman's role. You've been uh, put on that line you mentioned with, with Canaxed and, and McNeil. Are you enjoying being back uh, as a centerman, back in the center of the ice and, and, and operating that way? Yeah, I mean, I talked to uh, Manor, um, I think at the – probably middle of the year there he, he asked me if I was okay with wing you know and I said yeah I mean I'm a toolbox you can put me wherever you want and I'll <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do the job for you but I, I, I love center I've been playing center for a long time uh, I know how to play it I know how to play wing he had me on the back end on a power play for a little while there so I know how to play that because I played it in junior so he put me anywhere and I'll and I'll play the role for you you kind of have uh run the gamut here this season i mean you've been in a scorer's role you've been in a checker's role you've been in a wing you've been at center at the point like you said i mean it's kind of been a fun season i would think getting a chance to kind of try everything yeah as a rookie you know that's uh it's pretty it's pretty fun and pretty fortunate that uh, i was i was able to, you I, I mean to get put in those situations it's it's kind of nice from a coach you mentioned uh earlier Troy 
not going to golf in the Condors Charity Golf Tournament. You're going to golf. Your pops is in town. He's going to golf as well. What's Chase Shaver's golf game like uh, here coming up on Monday? Are, are we placing bets and are we putting it in the Shaver's camp? Oh, I mean, if you guys want to bet, we can bet. <laughs> like, Whoa! I'd, hey, love, hey. I'd love to take some money for you. <laughs> well, no, I want to know if my money – I'm not in the golf tournament. I need to know which team I need to put my money on. I need, I need some horses here. I mean, do I have Chase Shaver – are you going out there looking to win this thing on Monday? Yeah, I I, I am. I'm going out there to win because I know I know a few guys are going to try and beat me. So uh, we got a few good golfers on the team. So I mean, what's your handicap? Um, you know what? We're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> In which case, I'm going to bet on Matt Thurber. I think. I think no, I wouldn't bet. I wouldn't go on Thurbs. No, oh. I golfed with him the other day. He shut her down after like three holes. Oh, so he might get. Uh, so, oh, all right. You have to take that uh, into consideration. One of those too. guys. Yep. Uh, you right. have to, if he gets frustrated, that's yeah, it. That's I mean, it. That's it. Next thing you know, they're throwing the clubs. I know all about that. I, I mean, I had a pretty good guy. day the other day when we went. I had uh, three birdies. Uh, oh, all right. And we only played nine. Right. Murph says. Murph says he's taking it 100 percent serious, and he's out to win this thing. I mean, have how, you seen how's well, when, when isn't he serious? Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? How's, how's Papa Shaver? I mean, it sounds like he might be the, the wild card here. I mean, if he's an ace in the hole. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put your money on him. We call, <laughs> Back home, we call him HP for horsepower. Okay. <laughs> so he just steps behind the ball and tries to hit it as hard as he can. So right, it goes good. probably 300 yards to the right or <laughs> something. So I don't... We need some recycled golf balls for him for that day. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, you know, we met you with, with Coach uh, in our last segment about getting bodies back here to Bakersfield. Broad is back here this week. LB's back. Is it nice uh, from a player's perspective? Uh, I know it creates, you know, less opportunity maybe uh, than either you would like or some other guys would like uh, to get on the power play, to get on the penalty kill. But is it nice to get the team back together and the team that, you know, was winning hockey games January and February together and having such good success here rolling into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, getting those guys back will be huge. Um, obviously, it's going to change the lineup quite a bit, having everybody back. But, um, you know, everybody's mindset is we want to go for it this year. And when we get all the horses back, you know, put them in line and let's, let's get it going. And, uh, I mean, whoever's hot, they're probably going to stay hot. And uh, Manor's probably going to play them. So, I mean, but with those guys coming back, it's uh, it's going to add a lot more firepower, and we'll be able to roll on it. Now, you know what the ECHL playoffs are like. You made the playoff yeah. run last year to the Good Western run Conference last Finals. Season with the Steelheads. Yeah. I mean, how much more fun from a player side of things is the playoffs compared to the regular season here in the grind? It's it's weird. It's a weird feeling because, you know, you're – you're beat down from the season. At the end of the season, it's just playoff time. And then all of a sudden, you're just like a little kid again. And, <laughs> you know, you get this huge energy boost. And it's like, well, we got something to play for now. Let's, you know, everything. It just feels like you're refreshed almost. And um, it's probably one of, the, one of the better feelings is playing in playoffs. You know, you kind of were in a situation last season that a couple of guys on this team are in this year. How hard is it for, uh, you know, these U of A kids that just came in, they finished their season, they went all the way through, and then all of a sudden you join a new team and you're right back into a playoff mix with a brand new club. What what kind of – how long does it take for you to kind of emotionally and mentally get on the same page? Uh, you know, I went through the same thing last year uh, in Idaho. I uh, I went from university down to Idaho on uh, an ATO, I think. Right. And uh, then – I just signed with them right away, and I just went down there just, you know, playing my game, and that's why we brought those guys down. You know, they're, they're good players. Like, when I played against them in the university leagues up in uh, in uh, the CIS in Canada, uh, they stood out every game. You know, they were huge impact players for the U of A Bears, and, you know, they've been doing well down here, so they're they're already making an impact. Last season, though, did it take you a couple of weeks before you thought, hey, playoffs let me get into this or did it just go right away for you uh as soon as i got to idaho i scored my first goal my first game so and you were in it so <laughs> I, was, in. I was in it right away so I'm ready to go well shapes four goals last night look for more uh 
here this weekend. Can we Absolutely. get four over the three? I'll take four over the three games uh, here this That'd weekend. That'd be good. That'd be yeah, good. four over three? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll take uh, a round of uh, 75 on uh, on Monday afternoon. <laughs> round of 75? Yeah, if you can, if you can bust out a round of 75, it'd be great. What do I get if I get a round of 75? You, you probably win. Yeah. <laughs> I'll split my betting with you <laughs> up there. Uh, but, Shapes, thanks for coming on. We appreciate thanks, it. When we come back, Mike Griffith will join us. It's kind of a, a flashback to the first ever Condors on a leash we were talking about. It kind of is. Mike Griffith, he'll make some picks. We'll check out the Western Conference standings as well. Condors moving up. Come on back. Condors Unleashed. <laughs>